Hello and welcome to the University of Manchester Physics Outreach Society's British Science Week interviews. Over the next 10 days, we will be interviewing a diverse range of physicists and physics students about what they do, how they got into it, and anything else that comes to mind. Each day will feature a physicist from a different field, and we start with Jess and Jazz, but I'll leave them to tell you more. So my name is Jasmine, and I'm here with uh, Jessica, who is a PhD student at the University of Manchester. So do you want to just briefly tell me um, who you are and what are you doing? Uh, yeah, so my name is Jess and I am in the final kind of six weeks of my PhD at the University of Manchester. I've spent the last four years in the biological physics group um, doing research into uh, different materials and how they can be used for um, what we call tissue modelling. Uh, and in particular, my project is um, kind of combined with the works of the pharmacy department at the University of Manchester um, to try and use um, different materials to make a model of the intestine um, so that we can kind of understand the reasons why and kind of the mechanisms behind um, all the different drugs and medicines that you take um, via tablets or through, through your mouth basically, um, how they kind of get absorbed in the intestine and kind of what that means for kind of, me kind of medical and kind of anything that's to do with um, kind of the absorption of um, drugs and medicines that way. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so basically you're a PhD student. Um, so before we kind of go into more detail about your project and stuff, um, would you mind kind of briefly explaining what a PhD is? Because I think not everyone might know what 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 is a PhD? What, what does that entail? Yeah, great. Um, so a PhD is kind of, a, an, I see it as an additional degree. Once you've done like, um, your initial degree, whatever that may be at university, um, you kind of take on a PhD and the ha whole idea of a PhD is that you are uh, doing new research um, on something that's not been done before, that's not been written about before. Um, so for me, that means doing uh, experiments and research in the lab. Um, so I'm an experimental PhD student um, and that means I'm going in and doing experiments, taking um, data and kind of interpretate interpreting that um, as kind of um, my project and that will be written up as um, kind of a big piece of work that will be my kind of thesis submission for my PhD. Okay, great. Um, so you kind of already explained a bit about your PhD. Do you want to tell a bit more, more in detail um, about your project? Yeah, I can do. Um, so uh, what I'm working with in particular are, um, is a special material called nanofibers um, and they're kind of absolutely tiny um, fibers as you can gather from the name. Um, and they have special properties that mean that they kind of, um, they work well with cells. So when we're in the lab and we're growing cells um, in like Petri dish forms, if you imagine that kind of scenario and um, these materials um, are really similar to how our tissues in our body are and um, the way kind of um, things like their stiffness and how they move as well as how they kind of interact with cells so I'm kind of using them and investigating what properties they have that make them good at this job and also trying to come up with um, a model to try and look at how um, different chemicals and different chemistry interacts with in particular like a gut model so uh, that's kind of the two stages of my project that like project as a whole that's really interesting um it's it's really fun to hear about like people talk about their projects because you can see like you're really enthusiastic about it and it's it's <laughs> so nice to see that um so yeah you kind of already a bit like mentioned this a bit but um what's your kind of ordinary day as a PhD student I know you're writing your thesis at the moment but like when you were doing these experiments and kind of that kind of stuff like what what's your day like? Um, so for me because I work with cells um, they're quite a interesting kind of experiment so when you work with cells you kind of almost have to look after them um, they're a bit like plants or children and um, they need food, they need kind of a good comfy environment um, and they need a nice and warm environment and um, so you have to keep changing kind of the, the kind of media that they grow in so they've got plenty of food so most of my days I'll be working with the cells to kind of keep them alive and keep them healthy 
Um, and then depending on kind of what I want to uh, examine or research or what I've discussed with my supervisor, um, I usually kind of make a plan for what experiments need to be done. And sometimes these can be done in a day or in an hour, or they can take three weeks to a month to kind of get from start to finish. So depending on what I'm doing, I could be in the lab for uh, all day or I could just pop in and out um, and be kind of writing up or doing data analysis when I'm not necessarily in the lab. So I'll be making graphs, um, kind of doing a bit of like mathematics on kind of some of the data that I've got um, and kind of trying to create a picture of what I've done in the lab and kind of outside of the lab on my computer, kind of what 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 the data really means or what I've actually gathered um, to find out really. So it's very different kind of almost every day, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Every day is different. I think that's one of the things I love most about my PhD. Um, you have kind of a, a lot of freedom yourself and within within the project, um, my supervisor is great. Um, he doesn't tell me every day. I don't come in and he says, just do this, just do that. Um, we have like an overarching goal and I just kind of manage my time and manage my projects. So uh, every day it could be something different, um, which is really great. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, as an undergraduate student, that's kind of your dream, isn't it? Like you just want to, <laughs> you want to get to the point where you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's, I would say that a PhD is so different than any kind of university or undergraduate degree or anything you've done at school before, um, where it's kind of like learning or people are t telling you or teaching you directly. Um, it's a lot more of your own investigation and your own kind of um research and finding out for yourself and then kind of feeding back and then having conversations off the back of that with kind of more academics and professors higher up with more experience than you but it's a lot of your own kind of independent work I would say yeah yeah that's great um so what about before you started um what make you, made you decide to do a PhD oh that's a, <laughs> a complicated <laughs> question so uh, I currently work in the physics department, but before I, I, I didn't have anything to do with physics, I was doing biochemistry. Um, and as part of my biochemistry university degree, I had like a year in industry, year in industry placement year. So um, after two years at university, I went out for a year and worked at a pharmaceutical company. Um, and there I just was in the lab 20 all, every day basically for the whole year and I realized I just love being in the lab I, I love doing experiments uh, um, everything that I learned in lectures and at school was kind of just pulled together in this kind of actual lab environment and that's what I really loved it wasn't necessarily the learning it was the doing it and kind of learning on the job um, and I knew I wanted to do that afterwards um, and I knew a lot of people had PhDs that, that kind of did that kind of job but also it was an opportunity to kind of carry on doing it um, but in more of like a learning environment. So that's kind of how I ended up um, wanting to do a PhD. Um, and then it was just applying for different projects and things that interested me. And that's how I ended up um, doing a physics PhD now because it's a bit of a crossover, but um, it was just the project and because it's between two different departments, it really appealed to me um, as something that I thought would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's really interesting that um, that you've kind of come into physic like physics from a very different background that I think a lot of um, physics PhDs would be, you know, normally would have. Um, so that's really yeah. great that you're, you have like a very multidisciplinary education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been a bit all over. I think it just shows that you don't have to necessarily follow a, follow a strict path. Um, there's a lot of crossover in science disciplines and um, a lot to be learned from kind of collaborations and like working with different people with different sets of skills. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the exciting things about science, but it is kind of a bit of a mishmash in terms of <laughs> uh, my history, probably diff a lot of different from quite a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think um, that's like for me as well, that's what appeals to me from physics um, in general because you can just apply it to so many different things and work in so many different fields yeah. Um, yeah. in science in general. Um, so why would you say that studying, like doing your project, why, why is that important? Why do we need to know these things? That's a great question. Um, I think that for me, all the science that I love 
um, and it interests me. Always has to have some kind of application or like it has to be translated into something that, that you could see kind of meaning something or being purposeful. Um, and for my work in particular, kind of having that outcome of um, understanding how like medical um, treatments and therapeutics, kind of how that kind of whole mechanism and how um, the gut is responsible for how different people react to different um, drugs and how we could maybe understand how that works. For me, that would really feed into um, better design of drugs, better um, kind of options for different people and kind of the more we understand about a process, the more we can take that understanding to apply it to things in the future that we're creating. Um, so if you understand that um, certain drugs aren't absorbed very well in under certain conditions or in certain patients or because of a certain reason, we can feed that back into the whole kind of medical process, talk to doctors, talk to people that make the medicine and try and improve that for end goal patients, but the industry as a whole and kind of healthcare system as a whole. That's a very overarching uh, kind of dream and I'm very, very tiny part of that, but that's kind of how new things kind of come to be, I guess, is like everyone kind of contributes their little part and somewhere in the future or someone with a bright idea will put them all together and be able to kind of come up with an application or a kind of theory or something that's actually tangible further down the line. Um, that's how I like to think of what my work is doing, whether it actually impacts anyone at all, I don't know. But. I'm sure it will, I'm sure it will. I mean, I think that's like, that's one of the, the kind of misconceptions as well that I think a lot of people who are not in science um, might think that, you know, you're sitting, you know, in your room and trying to write some equations down or, you know, doing some experiments and then you just have that like eureka moment and that's it and you've like solved like the biggest problem there is and yeah. that is not true <laughs> at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice idea. And in theory, you are contributing, but it's kind of more of a rarity to actually have just a, yeah, a big, a big reveal. But um, it's all part, part and parcel of it. Definitely. Yeah. And I think in a way, it's kind of even more sort of like enriching that you get to work with so many different people and you know that you're all doing your like little part. And in the end, there's going to be a big contribution to Definitely. you know yeah. people and make make people feel better um yeah. what about um I know that might be a bit of a scary question <laughs> but what what do you um think of doing after you've finished your PhD um yes yeah, so I kind of hope to really kind of take what I've learned from my PhD and apply it to more like science communication roles I realized that um I really love talking about science and I really like being able to talk to people that maybe don't have an understanding or like a necessarily involved in science a lot and be able to kind of portray to them like how cool it is, how valuable it is. Um, and in particular, my kind of, I really liked working with the kind of medical industry and kind of how that kind of plays in. So in terms of like the biology side of it, the medical health side of it, um, so when I finish, I hope to be able to kind of be a science communicator for the healthcare sector um, and see kind of how that goes. Um, it's quite different. It won't be in the lab anymore. And that kind of makes me a bit sad. Um, I think I will miss it. But um, it's just one of the many things you can do. I think there is a bit of a misconception with um, if you do a PhD or you're kind of like academically um, kind of started an academic career in terms of going to university maybe you've done a master's um, that there aren't that many options you go into you either stay in the lab in the university or you stay in the lab in a company um, but there's so many different options it's so wide ranging you'll be so surprised at how many different jobs like that aren't in in a lab but still want you to have a PhD or really value your knowledge from having done a master's or something like that and there's so many parts that kind of um, play a role and science communication kind of role that I'm going into is not something I'd ever known of before just through um, from school or anything like that but it's just kind of come about um, over the past few years so that's what I hope to go into anyway that was very long <laughs> long way of saying that's, that that's really great um like so that's basically what UMPO is doing like what we're doing at an undergraduate level 
Um, it's just trying to get kids and the general public to be more kind of interested in, you know, like more into science in general. Um, so I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's a great um, choice of career, definitely. Yeah, I think I think it's, it, I see, I'm like a passionate person about science, but I can see those, even like my own family members and friends, um, it can be quite daunting or scary or kind of a bit confusing. And just to kind of be able to communicate and highlight what is cool and kind of take away all the complexities of it and just say it how it is, I think is like a really important kind of role that we need um, just as a society as a whole. I think it's really important to build that confidence in science and scientists. Um, and like you, you kind of need those roles, whether it be at a school level um, or whether it be kind of in a different specific sector. I think it's really important. Yeah, definitely. And like, I think especially now that we've got like, you know, the pandemic and, and everything. And I think like people are having to kind of, we're like forced to come in contact with science. And I think yeah. um, just if, if people were able to kind of, have more experiences with understanding what science is like and and what the scientific method is like and I think it, there would be more kind of trust towards scientists as well yeah, and I think exactly. like it, it would help as well in these situations. Definitely yeah and I think all of it uh, as of anything it's just being able to talk to people at the right level to be able to communicate kind of clearly so that you know people aren't um you know, mis misjudging or feeling misled or, you know, is that having that confidence that that comes from understanding and being kind of aware of what's what's happening. It's really important. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Um, so I've got one last question. Um, yeah. So what advice would you give somebody who is in school who might be thinking about a career in science or in physics or in biophysics? Um, so, yeah, what, what kind of advice would you give someone? Um, definitely just, oh, that's a oh, big <laughs> responsibility on giving advice, isn't there? I would just encourage you that if you're enjoying science at school, keep it up. Just get involved in as many different things as possible. Just open yourself up to different experiences because um, kind of what I said before in terms of even just jobs after doing a PhD or something like that, there's so much out there. Like I said, I would never have ended up in physics had someone asked me when I was doing, you know, my A-levels, oh, what, what, what do you think you'll be doing after university? I would never have told you I'm doing a PhD in physics because it was just not on my radar. You know, it just was, was crazy. So I would say just always keep your options open. Talk to as many people as possible to get kind of their opinion or their experience because um, there's, there's so many different kind of uh, fields of science kind of areas of science I mean I'm I'm a lab-based scientist so I do experiments in lab but there's so many other kind of forms of science whether it be theoretical um, or you know computing based there's so much more to it than just that but I would say if you're interested in how things work and why they work and what kind of makes makes things tick and makes things kind of um, do what they do I think you have a kind of the right kind of mind to to do, take on some kind of science-y degree or project and um, I think that's all you need is a bit of curiosity and a bit of in, in, inquisition so um, yeah just ask those to people um, yeah I'm not sure if I've got any more practical advice than that I think that's, great. I think that's really good um, I definitely <laughs> agree with that <laughs> thank you so much thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today no thank you for having me <laughs> Thank you for joining us for today's interview. We hope you enjoyed it and that you will join us tomorrow when we meet Matthias Heil, a mathematician that does physics. Don't forget to like and subscribe and spread the word to your friends. The hashtag is hashtag BSW21 and our social media accounts are at UOMThisOutreach.